I understand that it was probably daunting to take on these women, these three enigmatic women and their places in history, but was it fear or what was the emotion when you first said, yeah, I'm gonna do this? After I said, are you sure you've got the right person? <laughs> As a five foot three year old, I don't know right? it was closer to six. It's such an extraordinary offer to get, mm. to say no to somebody like Eleanor. It's one of those jobs where you almost have to say yes before you think about it too much, because mm -hmm. if you think too much, then you might actually say no out of fear. Viola, same question to you. Absolutely terrifying. But with Michelle Obama, it's like everyone has ownership over Michelle Obama. I mean, her book came out, it was like a bestsellers list. Everyone knows what she looks like, what she sounds like, yeah. what her hair looks, you know, so for me, I like taking creative license. I don't like to be sort of put in a box. I'm like, oh my God, what did I do? I didn't want to do what Jillian just said, like say yes first <laughs> and then realize, oh my God. Well, that's what I did. I said yes and I was terrified, but more terrified because I'm afraid of what she will think. In four years, I don't want to look back and think, what did I become living in that house? Is it an advantage or disadvantage? Because you do know her. There's a sister bond Absolutely. there for me. So it's a girl code. It's like, I got to make the sister look good. It's all those things that you don't think about when you're an actor. Same question to you, Michelle. Were you like Jillian and said yes first and thought about it later? Not only did I say yes first, <laughs> I got a message that Suzanne Bear wanted to speak to me, that she had a project, but she wanted to speak to me first. And all she said was, we're doing a show about the first ladies and I'd like you to play Betty Ford. I said, I'm in. I, I never she do did. that. I mean, I torture myself over every decision I make. Of course, I knew very little about Betty yeah. Ford, like most people, which was one of the big attractions. Once I realized the scope of his character. <laughs> it was terrifying. Yeah. It was it was terrifying. And then there is the pressure of, oh, the family, you know, the right. You just don't want to let anyone down. It is my great honor to introduce to you the first lady of the United States. Uh oh, still got it. Never lost it. <laughs> the first lady has to be a special kind of woman. When you were digging deep into these women, was there something that just leaped out and grabbed you about them, the thing that impressed you most? I think how outspoken she was. I was so struck by her intense need to be honest and transparent mm -hmm. and do what was right. She had such a sense of integrity for herself and her family. Just the personal, who they are when their doors are closed and they have to deal with all the bull crap that they have to navigate and then how it sort of um, settles and how it affects the dynamics of their relationships. What it further uh, led me to is the power of the historian, the power of the people who can write history down and what they miss. They don't grab that conversation that you know, the first lady had with her husband saying, you know what, that law that you're about to sign, I think I completely disagree with it. Right. I think you need to change it A, B, and C. You don't get the mess. You don't get the contradictions. I wonder for you, Jillian, the same thing. Then mm -hmm. you have Eleanor Roosevelt who was pushing Teddy Roosevelt, like, no, 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 this is what we're gonna do. Eleanor had such a voice before Franklin was in office and continued to build on that voice. I, but I think that on the one hand, what surprised me about her was despite, you know, we, we know so much about how powerful what she was, how much work she did for civil rights. We don't know is actually how low her self-esteem was, how she suffered from slight depression, how she had so much self-doubt because of her childhood, how much grief she had in her life between her husband's devastating affair and also the death of her parents. And despite the fact that internally, at many points in her life, she had great, great doubt that she continued to speak out and to represent the things that she believed in. I was quite moved and shocked by yeah. that. Suzanne and Kathy, what throughout this process was the most challenging to put this kind of anthology together of these women? The most tricky thing I think was really honoring 
these women. You read everything about them and you are so impressed and kind of taken and seduced and kind of feels their pain and their struggles and you don't want to let them down. And I think that the big thing was how do you describe 110 years and how do you kind of honor all what they've done and who they are and their kind of crazy life and trajectory and not kind of let them down in any way and still be entertaining and fun and history hasn't focused on the women no. and so there was this huge sort of sense of how do we reveal them in a certain way for the first time less so in some ways with Michelle Obama although she kept it very close to the vest you know what was really going on she absolutely she certainly did. did but for all of them you know how do we shift that lens you know and see what it was really like to be there from the female point of view for the families and like introduce a different way of looking at these events in history from behind the scenes. We said we had this huge sense of responsibility to do that right, you know, to put the right foot in front of ourselves and, and, and show them. Did you send to the families? Did you send to Mrs. Obama the episodes? <laughs> Have you gotten anything back? <laughs> we're waiting for their response. I know this, the last time we spoke to Mrs. Obama and asked her, she said, Viola Davis is the greatest. You said it. I mean, you know, I, I feel that I'm not worthy, okay? Wow. <laughs> it's, it's like, I wish I could be better to live up to the character that Viola has to play. Um, but it is, you know, it's, it's exciting and anything Viola does, she does it with passion and, and vigor, and I know she will do uh, no less for this role. I'm so. gonna remind her of that. <laughs> what do you think the best lesson that we can all learn from the lives of these women? The power of being honest mm -hmm. and the power of female leadership. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's tremendous power in being totally transparent and honest about subject matters and about things that people are terrified to unleash. I mean, and Betty Ford realized when she was honest with the American people about her breast cancer, which none of them wanted her to do, they were terrified of it. And what she saw was the response that she got from people and how much it meant to people and how her popularity just <laughs> zoomed. And she saw the power in that and she never forgot it and she really started to utilize that in her role as First Lady. For me, it's the power of compassion. One of the things that we've learned in the last two years is either we move forward together or we don't move forward at all. Absolutely. And I think that with bipartisanship, I think that with policies that have been put in place, oftentimes they benefit just one sect of people. And every administration is trying to fix or reset what the administration before did, when really the ideals and the ethos of this country is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all. And we continue to miss that. It is further emphasized, I mean, for me, you know, in doing the research with Michelle Obama, Barack, because we were the first black family. Yeah. And so everything is emphasized. The war on drugs, nutrition, all of that and how it is defined by the white community, by the rich community, by the black community. It's just always a hodgepodge. And at some point, I don't think it's probably gonna happen in my lifetime, I just want it, to, I want it to be right. I feel like that was Michelle Obama's big thing too. Eleanor was in the White House at the beginning of the New Deal. She mm -hmm. was part of that. Mm -hmm. She was also asked to join the United Nations and she helped to, to pen the Declaration of Human Rights. So at the beginning of her political career and at the end of her political career, she was helping to, or at least attempting to, manifest exactly and precisely what Viola is talking about right now in terms of all for one and one for all, not just within America, but universally. So learning from Eleanor and the focuses that both she and Franklin in being in office for what ended up being 12 years and what they attempted to do at that time is kind of what this country needs 
right now more than pretty much anything else. Suzanne and Kathy, take us home. Well, you know, Eleanor, she set it all in motion. You know, she was the first modern first lady, as you know, Jillian was saying, and she really turned the necessary wheels to begin anti-racism, women's rights, and everything that leads towards what Viola was saying, which is, you know, a country of one, where we're all together. And I think that's, if anything, the show can, you know, reveal um, the complexity of all of these years of history how much these women and you know shared in terms of their complete commitment to help American people and to bring their own values from their families. The biggest takeaway is the fact that yes, highly influential, incredibly uh, focused on what the, the position enabled them to do in terms of social, cultural changes but also human beings with real lives. And the understanding for everybody watching it that life really consists of those two entities and that one impacts the other hugely. Mm -hmm. That the, the private lives actually impact how the policy of a country or even the world functions. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably the biggest takeaway and also the most sort of rewarding. Mm -hmm.